Well, hello, everybody. It's Jessica from Chambray Blues. I'm back with another easy tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about toppers. And if you don't know what a topper is, it's a super easy garment. It takes about three yards of fabric, and it's a really easy project to make. It'd be a great gift item if you're looking for gift ideas. And there's no pattern required. It's, it's that simple. So first of all, what is a topper? So when I worked retail, which I did for like probably 25 years, long, long time on and off, I worked retail, we would get these toppers into the stores and they would sell like hotcakes. Everybody loved them because they're such a simple thing to throw on over a tank top, a camisole, a blouse, a sweater, and they can be made out of a variety of fabrics. So really for any season, you can use a topper. And what it is, is just a piece of fabric with an opening cut for the neck and then uh, a straight opening for the front. Kind of similar to what I'm wearing today. This is actually a little bit more of a kimono because it has the underarm seam. So a topper does not have an underarm seam. It's open at the sides, which makes it a great layering piece. Um, as far as choosing fabrics, you can use a silk, like this is a silk organza, which would be a beautiful topper. Um, silk chiffon, which is what I'm working with today. You could use Georgette, you could use organza, you could use um, to go over jackets and things, a little bit heavier materials. You could use wool, rayon chalet, embroidered fabrics are very nice. Um, any specialty tool, I've done that in the past. Uh, you can see my poster, that one over there is a tool fabric. That would work well in a topper. Lace fabric would work well. It's really a versatile garment and it's super easy to make. So we're gonna do that today and I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. So my fabric, like I mentioned, is a silk chiffon. This was one of the fabrics that I had with me in my booth at the um, sewing expo in Palalip, I never say it right, Pulalip, Washington last winter and uh, I pretty much sold out of, it, out of it but I saved one piece for myself. I don't know if that's selfish or not but I'm guilty of fabric hoarding. What can I say? So I saved this beautiful piece of fabric and it's a three yard piece and I just loved the print. In fact uh, everybody else did too. That's why it sold so quickly. So all you need is three yards for this project. It doesn't matter how wide your fabric is or how narrow your fabric is because what's going to happen is you'll just have more width like edge to edge on your arms. So this particular piece is actually quite wide. It's about 50 inches wide. And uh, I am going to use the entire piece, which makes it really efficient because if you spend money on things like silk chiffon, you really don't want to waste any of it. Okay, so I have the fabric folded with the salvages on either end. So my salvage is here, I have a fold at the top, and this is basically how the garment is going to fit. So this would be like the shoulder part of the garment. So what we're going to do is cut off the selvages and hem those, and then we're going to make an opening for the front to slip over our head. The first thing I need to do is remove the selvage. Now in for a lot of woven fabrics, you can just um, clip the selvage and pull it and it'll, um, it'll rip all along the same thread all the way down the fabric. Uh, because this is a little bit more delicate, I'm not going to do that. I am going to use a rotary cutter. So I'm just going to line up my selvages here. I'm folding it in quarters just to make it easy to remove that salvage with one cut. I have a rotary cutter here. And a ruler someplace. One second, I gotta grab my ruler. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I use a clear plastic ruler. This one's only two inches. You can use quilting rulers, which are wider and thicker. It works the same way. So I have a cutting mat here and I'm just going to line up 
my fabric so I can trim off about a half inch. Mm, just looking for my weight. I'm not finding anything today. Okay, we will improvise with some scissors. There we go. Just to hold it in place. So while I am doing this, if you want to leave a comment, let me know where you're watching from. Um, the other videos that I did last week, tutorials, were so much fun because we had people from all over the world watching. And I would love to know where you're watching from. I am in Pensacola, Florida. And the day after Hurricane Zeta is a beautiful sunny day here. We really didn't get any weather to speak of, just a little bit of wind and some rain where I am. So one of the things to be careful of when you're cutting something like silk where you're going to do a fine hem on it is to keep those edges as straight as possible because it makes it easier to roll the edge. Uh, and now that I say that, I didn't replace my blade on my cutting blade and so it's a, not as straight as I would like it. Always start with a good sharp blade. That's rule number one. <laughs> okay, so I trimmed that seam allowance off, or I'm sorry, the salvage off of here, and I'm just going to go over to the other side, do the same thing, I'm gonna fold it into quarters so I can trim this off. Now I have seen some garments uh, actually in stores that still have salvages on them, and it's it's not something I like. Um, the selvage is there to keep the fabric from moving during the manufacturing process. And when you're working with it, when you're sewing with it, um, it, it really needs to move more than that. So it is far better to remove the selvage. A lot of times it can be full of holes and it can be dirty and soiled and, you know, sometimes it has manufacturers information on it, things like that. So you really don't want that on your finished garment, particularly if it's a gift. All right, so I'm gonna remove the other salvage. I'm using just a half inch um, guideline from the edge of my fabric. Get it as straight as you can. And a sharp blade makes all the difference in the world. It's a little bit easier when you're standing too versus when you're sitting. So that's my piece. We'll get rid of that. Okay, so now we need to find the center of our piece. So as I said, the fold is going to be what is essentially the shoulders of the garment. So I have my, um, my cut edges, not where the selvage was, but where the fabric was cut along the length at one end. And that gives me the exact area of the fold that's gonna be my shoulders in, okay? So now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna fold it in half again so I can find the center. And it's important that you get the center because you, your garment um, has to be even or you'll end up you know, with one shoulder this way and one shoulder that way. So it needs to be in the center. So I'm gonna mark that with a pin. And if you're using a silk fabric, you should use silk pins. Um, it's actually quite important because silk runs very easily and get holes in it. And it's very important um, to have a nice sharp pin. You can get those uh, in your fabric store or online, uh, places like Wyak have them. Uh, it's a good resource, or you can even get them on Amazon. All right, so I'm gonna line it up here so I'm sure that I have everything matched up. So what I'm gonna do is cut along this next fold. 
The reason I'm doing that, again, is so that we have an opening down the front. The garment's going to slip over your head, and you're going to have an opening all the way down the front. Okay. You know, sometimes things just don't hold still. Shake it out here. And of course, chiffon is one of those things that moves a lot. So you may want to use clips or something like that to hold it in place. That is a good idea also while you're trying to get it cut. Okay, so I'm going to use my scissors for this. And the reason for that is, um, I just want to cut one layer of fabric. So just as the top that I'm wearing has the cut on this part to go around your neck, you don't want to have a cut down the back. We don't want a seam down the center back. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if we had a seam there, but I'm trying to preserve this particular print, so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to use the very edge of the fold here and just cut along it all the way to where the shoulder would be. I'm just cutting the one layer. Sorry, my machine is turning on again. <laughs> it kind of has a mind of its own. All right, I'm gonna use that to hold it and just make sure I've got everything lined up. I need more table space. There we go. Okay, now I can see I've got a straight line. So I'm just gonna grab the very outside layer, only one layer of fabric to cut it on the fold. If you prefer, you could measure it and mark it with chalk before you cut. That works too. I'm just gonna keep it simple and just cut this all the way up to the top, just this one layer of fabric. You could even press the fold in, that might be a good idea too. Uh, makes it easier to cut straight if you're not real confident about cutting straight. I do things like this a lot, so I'm comfortable with it. So I'm gonna cut all the way up to where I marked with the pin, just up to it. I'm gonna take my pin out. So now, if I open this up for you, Here's what I've got. I've got an opening like this, sort of like a big V. And then the back is all intact. So just to give you an idea, it's going to go around like this. And we're gonna hem these side edges. We're gonna hem the neck and the side edges and then the bottom and that is it, it's super easy. Okay, so let's talk about methods of hemming. In this case, because I'm using a silk chiffon, I'm going to use a narrow rolled hem. Uh, for this, I'm using a single needle stitch with an all-purpose thread. If you have silk thread, that's a good choice for a silk fabric. I also like 100% cotton thread because it's easy to control. So I use both. Um, they do sell special presser feet. And you, I don't know if you can even see this because it's super tiny. They do sell presser feet to help you do a rolled hem. They're only a few dollars. They work okay. I wouldn't say they're great. I don't think they're a have to have in your sewing repertoire. It makes it easier for some people. 
for years I've done it without, and I'm not going to show you um, a method with that. You can see that on my YouTube channel already. I have a good tutorial on how to do that. So for today, I'm just going to use a regular presser foot and do it by hand. So one of the things that you want to look for when you're choosing fabric for your project is to get a fabric that has um, a back that looks similar to the front. So as you can see, when I hold this, you can see this print on both sides of the fabric, which works well for a topper because it tends to blow in the breeze and you want to be able to um, get the overall look of the fabric without having it blank on the inside. So I have another fabric here to show you. This is another one I have um, in my shop. And I thought about making a topper out of it, but I thought, oh, look at this back. So this print is only printed on one side of the fabric. And you can see the back of it is much lighter and it's kind of ugly. So I really don't want to make uh, a garment where you'll see the back side and have it um, sort of an ugly light color. So I'm going to skip that one for this project. We'll find something else to do with that. Okay, so here we are going back to hemming. So I am going to sew this with a quarter of an inch rolled hem. So when you use um, these little presser feet for rolled hem, you can get a really fine finish, uh, about an eighth of an inch. It'll roll over about an eighth of an inch two times, which will make up your quarter inch. When you're doing it with a regular presser foot, you can't really do that. Um, so it's going to be a little bit wider. It depends on how much control you have. So one of the things I recommend is experimenting and practicing on like a cotton fabric that's easy to control before you start with something slippery like silk or satin. I like to use the inside of the presser foot as my guide. The very narrowest part of the inside of my foot is probably an eighth of an inch. And then the little bit wider part inside my presser foot is a quarter of an inch. So for this, I'm going to go with a quarter of an inch just because it's easier to control. I can do it quickly and um, just roll it over as I work. And I'll give you some tips on how to do that. So when you work with fine fabrics, you make sure you have a sharp needle. Make sure you have a good stitch length. So I'm using a stitch length of 3.0 for this. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, if you get too small with your stitch length, it makes it harder to do. So start with a stitch length of 3.0. If you're using a heavier fabric, you might need to go with a little bit longer, 3.5 or even 4.0 stitch length. And one more big tip. Fine fabrics tend to get caught in the feed dog of your machine, especially when you are just starting the machine. So I highly recommend that you put your presser foot down and then put the needle down into the fabric before you start sewing. It makes a world of difference on the overall look of the seam. Uh, another thing you can do is start on like a cotton piece of fabric, small cotton piece of fabric, start sewing on that, and then put your chiffon up next to that and gradually uh, transition to the other fabric. That works well too. I've done it both ways. So I'm folding this as I work, and the key to getting a nice even seam is to pull it a little bit with your hands. So I don't use pins uh, for this, as I said, so I keep one hand behind the machine, not really to pull it, but just to guide the fabric, and then the other hand will be in front here, probably six inches away from my presser foot, and I'm using my fingers to just roll that seam over as I go. Now this is such a busy print. If I make a lot of mistakes, no one is going to see it because it is so busy. And that's one of the benefits of using a print that's got a lot of things going on. So we're going to sew this whole front seam with the quarter of an inch seam long. 
and just folding it over the one time as I learn, as I go. And I'm using the presser foot as my guide. We do the whole thing this way. All the way down to the other side. Okay. Uh, this is a long seam on here, so I'm going to oops, stop it there so we can talk a little bit about what comes next. So I would give it a little bit of a press, and then you go back and sew over that same line of stitching a second time. So what does this do? It does a couple things. Chiffon fabric is easy to unravel. Uh, for example, if you use a serger and serge it, sometimes it'll just pull apart and you'll have to restitch it. So by turning it over one time and sewing it and then turning it over again, which is the next step, turn it over again and stitch it again on top of the first line of stitching, it makes a really solid seam. Because when you're wearing something, you're kind of pulling it up around your shoulders, it's sort of a stress point there and you don't want it coming apart. So that's how you're gonna finish the entire neckline. And then you're going to go and do it on the underarm. I shouldn't say it's not really underarm, but the side part of the topper as well. Top and sides. And believe it or not, we're going to do the same thing for the hem. Now for the hem, I would make it a little bit wider. I would probably do um, the first, turn it over. And so the first pass with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then I would turn it over again and maybe do a half an inch at the hem. Just a little bit more uh, weight to it. I think it'll hang a little bit nicer than if you just do two lines of skinny stitching. Either way, you can do it that way too, but um, my personal preference is to make the hem always a little bit bigger. It just seems to add more weight uh, to the garment. And that is it. That's it, you guys. It's like the most simple garment you can imagine and it's really fun to make because you can get it done in a day and you can wear it that night. So I'm going to the beach tonight and I'm gonna wear my topper and I'll post pictures. But uh, my husband and I have this um, tradition two or three times a week now we've been going to the beach and I'm going to wear it uh, maybe over some shorts and a tank top to the beach, maybe a suit, I don't know, I haven't decided yet, something like that. But that's the whole project. It's really easy. You only need three yards of fabric and you don't need a pattern because it's really not required. Um, some other options. Now, if you're using a heavier fabric to make this, let's say you're using a wool, you may consider fringing the bottom instead of hemming it. You could still do the side uh, part, do it a narrow hem on there, and then at the bottom, pull your threads out from the bottom, use a pin and just pull them out one at a time. And I would probably go in three inches, a good three inches from the bottom of the garment. You just keep pulling those threads out and keep pulling them out. And that'll fringe the bottom of your garment and makes a nice look too. Couple of easy options. I've seen, uh, also seen toppers that have fur trim on them. Um, fabric stores have bits of fur trim in stock right now because it's the season. I've seen it at Hobby Lobby and probably Joanne's too, I think. And you can stitch some fun trim along uh, the outside part of the, the garment and around the neck would also work really well too. So that's it for today. I will post pictures of my finished topper tonight. And I'm hoping to see what you guys create. Uh, please send me a note. You can tag me on social media. It's Chambray Blue Sewing for a chance to be featured on my accounts and uh, or even in the, the Facebook group. Uh, we're here to support each other and would love to see what you're making. So that's what we got for today. So enjoy making your topper and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.